Hello students, I am Adil from edwinput.com and uh, today we are going to discuss about hybridization. This is probably the most important lecture in case of organic chemistry. So let us start the lecture. So we will be going through the lecture from the beginning to end by just comparing all of the intermediate level questions with examples and the structure of molecules as well. We will start from the simple definition. Uh, what actually hybridization is, it is basically mixing of orbitals with slightly difference in energy to form new orbitals, which are basically called hybrid orbitals. So these hybrid orbitals are mostly having same energy and they are totally different from the shape of the parent atomic orbital who participated in the process of hybridization. So let us take a example. For example, we have some orbitals over here. These have totally different shape and these may be of same shape as well, but the orientation may be different in space. So in this case, we have drawn four orbitals naming s orbital some p orbitals okay so after combination after the process of hybridization these will form new orbitals and these will be totally different in shape but the energy level will be same we'll be discussing it in detail in further slides so here we have more than seven types of hybridization, but the basic level uh, include sp3, sp2 and sp hybridization. Some rare cases, some special cases are also there in higher level chemistry books. These are sp3 dehybridization and basically sp3 d2 and sp3 d3. These three types of special cases in term of hybridization was the T orbital and in the basic type of hybridization only S and P orbitals involved. So we are not going to discuss these three special cases of hybridization because this is not the part of our curriculum. So let us discuss. So how can we find the hybridization? Just imagine we are sitting in a lab and we have come to face some molecule drawn on the panoplexes or on the notice board. How can we identify just by having a look? So process is just going to be very simple. There are three methods. We can predict the type of hybridization in a molecule by counting the number of sigma and pi bonds and by steric number and then by drawing the orbitals. The prior two methods are very simple and tricky. So this is, these two methods is going to make the process of finding hybridization much easier for the students of intermediate level. So let us start the first method by counting the number of sigma and pi bonds. Suppose we have a molecule like CH4. This method is for the students who have some knowledge about the geometry and shapes of molecules. So in this case, methane CH4, what we have, we have one carbon atom and four hydrogen atom. So we know carbon being the central atom can make four bonds and in this case we have four hydrogen and we know that hydrogen only forms single bond. So according to the scenario, we have this sort of structure, methane. So we just need to count the number of sigma bond. We know that a single bond is always sigma bond. Okay, we represent it with this symbol. So we need to count these. There is one, two, three, and four. There are four sigma bond. Whenever there is, there are four are all the bonds are sigma. Or sigma or single bond, the hybridization hybridization will be sp3. So in this case, we have four sigma bonds. So this is going to be sp3 hybridized orbital. 
Similarly, we can see structure of ethene. So, carbon is doubly bonded with an other atom of carbon. So, what the scenario is going to be? We have uh, in this case atom A, okay, and atom B. So, in case uh, of atom A, we have carbon attached with two hydrogen atom and on the second side, the other side, it is attached to a carbon atom, doubly bonded. So, we see that double bond contains one sigma and one pi bond. So, whenever for a central atom, there is a pi bond involved, the sp2 hybridization will be observed. So, we can see in ethane, the hybridization is going to be sp2, just because we have one pi bond involved. Similarly, there are countless number of molecules where we can predict the type of hybridization by just having a look on the structure formula of their molecules. Let us move towards the next method. This is steric number, one of the most interesting method. It's a basically formula, steric number, where we find the number of lone pairs in a molecule. So, we take again the example of methane molecule. So, the formula is number of lone pairs, okay? So, what we need, we will write V minus B minus C over 2, okay? Now, in this case, what we stand for is valence electron, okay? Valence electron, I am representing the electron writing ES over minus, okay? And B stands for number of bonded electrons, okay? It may be number of bonded electrons or number of bond pairs. And C stands for charge. Is there any charge on molecule? So, we will be putting the value of that charge or simply we can say it valency as well and over 2. So, let us further explain this process. So, number of lone pairs in case of methane. So, we need to write the vapor of valence electron. First of all, we need to check it out what is the central atom. In case of methane, the carbon is the central atom. And uh, we know that carbon has four valence electrons. So, we will replace, we will you know, input value four. And then minus number of bonded electrons. So, we have four electrons in case of carbon. All are bonded with hydrogen. So, bonded electrons are also four. And if we have a look at the charge on methane molecule, there is nothing. So, no charge over two. So, mathematically 4 minus 4 over 2 will result into no lone pairs. So, number of lone pairs are 0. It has been proved that methane has no lone pair. Now, come to what the steric number. So, I am going to write ST, steric number. Steric number is uh, equal to lone pair plus bond pair. Okay, so in case of methane, what we have that it has zero lone pair and the number of bond pairs are four because we know that carbon is attached to four hydrogen atoms. So, number of bond pairs are four. So, zero plus four equal to four. So, recall the process of uh, formation of sp3 hybridized molecule that was including 
वन एस ऑर्बिटल एंड थ्री पी ऑर्बिटल सो कलेक्टिवली देर वर फोर ऑर्बिटल पार्टिसिपेटिंग इन फॉर्मेशन ऑफ द मॉलिक्यूल सो इफ द स्टेरिक नंबर इक्वल्स टू फोर देन द हाइब्रिडाइजेशन विल बी एस पी थ्री सिमिलरली इफ हाइब्रिडाइजेशन इज टू बी checked out in case of doubly bonded molecule like in case of ethene we need to have a look at this molecule this is very basic molecule uh, ethene we are going to write ethene so c double bond c mean both the carbon atoms are attached to further two hydrogen atoms so central atom is we need to find number of lone pair okay central atom is carbon it means it has four valence electron the bonded electrons are also four so charge is zero over two so four minus four over two it means zero lone pair in case of alkene and if we talk about a steric number steric number will conclude as number of lone pair which is zero in case of ethene plus bond pair so there are three bond pairs because according to wells bond theory it is clearly mentioned in wells bond theory that the double or triple bond will be considered as single bond pair although they carry occupy more space but they will be treated as single bond pair so in case of ethene we have one double bond but it will be considered as a single bond pair so total of three bond pairs 0 plus 3 equal to 3 so if steric number is equal to 3 the hybridization will be sp2 because we already know that in sp2 hybridization there are three orbital taking part One s and two p orbitals. So this way we can also predict the geometry and hybridization of molecule simply by practicing and then having a look on the structural formula of that molecule. So I have also proved that methane is having sp three hybridized carbon by both methods by counting the number of sigma and pi bonds and then by calculating the lone pairs using steric number so let us move towards the basic and uh, the widely used method it is very authentic as well where we draw some orbitals so by drawing orbit the third method let us take example of carbon atom because we know the carbon is the only compound who can compete with all the elements in the periodic table in terms of formation of maximum number of compound so carbon is the integral part of organic chemistry that's why we will be taking it as an example as a standard atom so we know that carbon belongs to fourth group and its atomic number is 6 so according to electronic distribution 1s2 2s2 and then 2p2 so the outermost electron are going in p orbital and this is valence orbital as well but we know that there are only two electron in 2p we know some sub orbitals are also present in case of 2p so we divide them 2p x 2p y and then 2p z so in case of carbon we have one electron in 2px and then second electron in 2py so in this scenario carbon is only able to make two bonds but in reality carbon makes four bonds how this is happening so basically this is the ground state electronic configuration of carbon atom and when we provide some heat to carbon atom so electrons are excited and transferred towards the higher orbital like 1s2 then 2s 
1 I'm going to write 1 2p x1 2p y1 and then 2p z1 where that electron came from in z orbital that was transition from s to p orbitals so now we have four valence electron four half filled atomic orbitals it means they can make bond with four hydrogen atom in case of need him so now they are almost of equal energy as the next orbital to s is p so these four will Combined to form four new orbitals called hybrid orbitals. In this case, the four orbitals have slightly difference of energy, but when these will be become like hybrid orbitals after the process of hybridization, these will have same amount of energy. So. But this is the reason that these four uh, atomic orbitals convert into hybrid uh, orbital and then combine with the other hybrid orbital of any atom. It may be chlorine, it may be bromine, it may be hydrogen, most of the cases in organic chemistry. So let us take some examples. In case of sp3 hybridization, this is the main topic of this lecture. So we have methane. We can see the ground state electronic configuration of carbon atom, then we have excited state of uh, electronic uh, configuration of carbon atom. So we see that in ground state there are only two half filled at orbitals and then in excited state there are four uh, half filled orbitals. So carbon atom in hybridized state, these four atoms from here to here will combine to form hybrid orbital and these are the hybrid orbitals okay now we see that this is the methane molecule where four electrons or four hydrogen atoms are present basically the red electron the red arrows are representing the high electrons of hydrogen atom so we can see this is the sp3 s hour lab as one s orbital is also involved that is in case of hydrogen hydrogen has only one electron that undergoes in first orbital that is s similarly in case of sp3 hybridization of carbon atom to give four sp3 hybrid orbital this is the process we have round form s orbital then 3p orbitals these 3p orbital they give us four sp3 hybridized orbitals and methane molecule has tetrahedral geometry with bond angle of 109.5 okay where we can see that four hydrogen atoms are also attached we can see this is the tetrahedral geometry okay in the next example, we are going to discuss about ammonia, where we know that the ammonia having seven atomic number. This is the ground state electronic configuration, where nitrogen has only three uh, valence electrons. We know that nitrogen forms three and five uh, bonds, but mo most of the cases nitrogen forms only three bonds, and two extra electrons remain as lone pair. Where we can see. In, in the ground state hybrid, uh, electronic configuration for the nitrogen atom and these are the hybridized uh, atoms of uh, for nitrogen atom and then comes the three electron three atoms of hydrogen so this is also sp3 s overlay because the second atom is hydrogen which has one electron in s orbital okay so this is sp3 s overlap similarly we can see the re orbital representation we know that this is the molecule of nitrogen with one lone pair okay in a separate orbital which you can see in this figure and this is the overlapping 
we know that this is the lone pair orbital and then these three are the hydrogen atom overlapping the lone pair changes the geometry this is a very important concept in organic chemistry the lone pair is responsible for the different types of geometry in molecules so we know this is although sp3 hybridized molecule okay like in case of methane it must have tetrahedral geometry but it has tetrahedral to trigonal pyramidal just because of this lone pair you know, exerting extra force of repulsion to these bond pairs so that's why the angle changes from the regular 109.25 to 107.5 degree okay so this is the reason that lone pairs play very important role in determining the geometry of molecules the example third is probably the most important and confused example for the students of this level where we have oxygen atom bonded to two hydrogen atoms having two lone pairs this is the ground state electronic configuration of oxygen because this is the polyvalent atom as a central atom and this is the hybridized uh, state of oxygen atom in hybridized state where only two s orbital and three p orbital three two p orbitals hybridized okay the water molecule like this where two hydrogen atoms are bonded this is the orbital representation where we know that two s and two p orbitals of oxygen hybridized to form four hybrid orbital so two of the orb hybrid orbitals are completely filled by the two lone pair that we see in oxygen in water molecule we know that this is the oxygen atom having two lone pair and two hydrogen atoms so this is the reason that its angle in uh, water molecule further goes down to 104.5 degree so the angle in, in water molecule decreases from 109 to 104 just because of double bond lone pair repulsion because in case of ammonia there only single uh, lone pair but in case of water molecule there are two lone pairs involved so we can see the lone pair itself is repelling is exerting a force of repulsion on the second lone pair and same is the case with lone pair bond pair repulsion you can see methane ammonia and then uh, water molecule angle is decreasing so student this is all about sp3 hybridization in next lecture we will be discussing about sp2 and sp hybridization if you have any question regarding this topic let us know in the comment section and we will try to sort out your problem see you later